political analyst Hamon Manyora is with us in the studio. Good morning, Hamon. Morning, Shulari. Good to have you on the show again. Thank you and congratulations for yesterday's wonderful job. Which one? What you did yesterday. Did you do something yesterday? I did many things yesterday. One of them was, <laughs> there was only one thing you did. <laughs> I know you. The, I know you had, had lunch. You had lunch. <laughs> you also woke up. You you, you, you said <laughs> hi to <laughs> Mugaia, but there's only one major thing you did, and that was well done. Asante, yes. As, Asante Sana. So you watched, yeah, watched. and you saw the um, promises that have been made. Yes. Just even in addition to yesterday's interview, promises have been made by these politicians. Correct. Uh, all presidential candidates are <coughs> making promises. We just had an interview with a uh, candidate for Madare MP, Kevin Kyoko Bahati. Yes. And he also is making promises. He says he feels strongly for the people of Bahati, where he comes from. And he feels that they need better representation in the National Assembly. And he promises that he's going to be a better voice on their behalf. Right? Yes. And Ndu, what are you saying about what uh, Bahati was saying. You, do, you, do you feel that he understands what the ground is saying? Well, I think I, hear, I, hear, he, I do feel he understands what the ground is saying because many would agree that he is part of the ground mm -hmm. itself by virtue of the fact that he grew up there. He is, you know, in regular communication with the people. So in terms of what the ground is saying, I think he's got his fingers on the pulse. The question for many, though, is will he then be able to deliver the solutions that they need or deliver what then... Uh, the house then would require of him. Mm. I think my judgment would be whether he'd be willing to go all the way in seeking solutions. Being able to deliver may not be 100% dependent on him. So he may have very many other forces that are fighting. Like we've seen, a member of parliament goes and champions and gets an item included in the budget. But then the budget is revised when it comes to implementation. And you only learn later that the item that was actually slotted in the budget is not going to work. Mm -hmm. so, and, you've, and you've gone and promised your people. And you've already work. gone and promised the people. It, look, this thing, it's in the budget. And I voted yes for that budget because we have something in there. Then, ah, things change. Is it the same that, that you see, Herman, when people make all these promises? They're making promises uh, oblivious to the fact that they are not the only players in that game. Well, politicians are all over the world. Uh, throughout time, I always make promises. So I, I'm not surprised mm. that they are making promises. Some they will keep. Some they don't even intend to keep. Some are mere uh, dreams, beyond the dreams. Uh, some they know they are taking us for a ride. Uh, a bulk of what they say, of course, is to just to make them get votes. So it's nothing unusual. And um, as for Bahati and his team in parliament, uh, the role of an MP has been subverted. Uh, we are walking logic on its head. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, I mean, to be an MP really <laughs> is to be an ATM, to be a labor officer, a welfare officer, manager of CDF. A medical officer. Yeah, you, but they are not doing what really an MP is supposed to do, which mm. is namely representation, mm. legislation, and oversight. Mm. That is subsidiary. The main thing is how how they are development conscious, mm. <laughs> how how well they run CDF and you know whether we they are well meaning, yeah. right? Because it, it starts with the character, like you've said before. If this person is uh, of a certain character, then they'll make some promises, knowing that at least I intend to fulfill some of these yes, promises yes. or to push to fulfill some of these promises. A certain other character will just make promises, knowing. <laughs> I'm selling yes. snake oil. Correct. There's absolutely <laughs> no way I have access yeah, yeah. to anything close to snake oil. Um, yeah. That's true. And they have no intention of keeping. How do we now distinguish between them? It's not easy. The politicians are all the same. Mm. Really. And, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't really care so much if at least 70% of what they do is the three things I've said. Representation, oversight, and... Uh, Legislation. And, and the legislation. Mm. So within the margin of 30%, you could allow them to make those promises. Because the things that an MP is promising, somebody who is running for parliamentary seat is promising, they're completely outside the purview of his job. So you, you get what I'm saying? Mm. 
because they will be talking about those three things an MP is supposed to do, then those are things they can keep. Uh, but if they are promising to build roads and they don't have the capacity to build roads, they don't have the money to build roads, they are not engineers, they are nothing. If they are promising to bring water and that's not their work. So uh, I wouldn't even bother about the promises myself. I want to object. Go ahead, sir. In this job of representation, yes, you're going to represent your people on the floor of the house. Yes. That is bringing their issue. Like you said, is it you were telling a city when MPs used to be called Mjumbe? Yes. Because you've been sent with an Ujumbe yeah, to ujumbe. Parliament. Yes, Mutetezi. So mutetezi, wow. So Kolejiko. If the issue <laughs> is road, yes. you take the issue to Parliament. Yes. Road. Yes. What needs to happen for this road to come? This road needs to be included in the project of yes. the government yes. in the annual budget. It needs to be also be included in the budget. So that is representation. Well, you know, that is a, a low-level understanding of uh, <laughs> representation. <laughs> <laughs> well, break it down. <laughs> representation uh -huh. simply means mm. democracy by the people for the people and accept that all the people cannot fit into that house. Mm. So they send a few people to talk on their behalf. It means that when you go onto the floor of <laughs> the house, yes. that you have been, because the assumption is that you as a member of parliament, yes. you have been with your people. Yes. And when you bring these issues and you have an open debate on the floor, yes. that you come and say, look here, my people do not have one, two, three. There is certain issues that we are dealing with one, two, three. Could it be at all possible that we start to look into those issues? You're representing them because, again, not who, all of you can who, go. Who are you telling? Who are yeah. you telling? Who are you telling? Who would you be telling? <laughs> is that not what You're telling is? people like you. But that's what it is. So yes. can we come oh, together? I mean, can we filibuster? If I say you mine and you say you are how we no, help each other. No, but that's what you're doing. You come in there, you're filibustering you so canvas. that you have an opportunity hmm? to make sure that legislation you know, follows for certain things to be put in place. You know, we have bastardized the process mm -hmm. and, and, and the whole uh, uh, meaning of politics and uh, government and governance. Mm. You see... There will be people who are supposed to do those things you are talking about. Uh, we would assume that uh, the budgeting process, uh, the experts we have employed in government, will have sort of uh, identified the kind of things that need to, to be done, the kind of things that need to, the, the cost of those things and the benefit to, to the country and regions and constituencies in general. Uh, perhaps the role of the MP would just deal with priority. You look here, you are going to do a road here. Well, why, why won't you make mine a priority? But that is supposed to be part of, within the budget, mm -hmm. within government expenditure plans, mm -hmm. within short term and long term, mid term, you know, those kind of. Yes. So if government has, a, 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 they have plans, development plans, you know, you cannot make noise in parliament one afternoon and expect everything will be turned around to accommodate your village road. No, but it's a process. <laughs> it's, it's not a, a process, process. Yes. Herman. Exactly. You it's start a process. Somewhere. You start somewhere. Yes. You start to have the In the next yeah. MTP, yes. this is the, the general over, overview of what the government is doing. Yes, yes. Now you make sure that your people's needs are included there. That, that's, that's, so, for example, you know, roads, yes, right? Yes, yes, Infrastructures. Yes. Now, when they are coming to prioritization yes. of that, mm. you have an opportunity to represent your people. You see what either what on the floor of the saying, house uh, or by canvassing the cabinet secretary I, or the ministry and saying, you know, people, please include this road. That will even not be the, the way to go. I come mm. from a constituent called Hamisi. The people of Hamisi yeah. have sent me to talk on their behalf. Yes. In matters of roads, for example, as, as an MP, I want to make a contribution in terms of how is the country engaging on matters of roads. Mm -hmm. What kind of roads does this country think they need? Mm -hmm. How come in the 21st century, this many years after the formation of America and as great as it is, mm -hmm. how come we still have maram roads in America? How come the thinking we have in this country that every village road has to be tarmacked? You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That is the high level contribution, the, the higher stuff I'm talking about. Eh? We have had a debate in terms of categories of roads in this country. That if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So your role as a leader at that in, in the National Assembly is to engage on that. I had Raila, you were with him, he talked about it yesterday. Mm -hmm. I think he talked about that. Eh? In terms of uh, what categories of road do we need? Do you still need Kera, Kura, and all those kind of things? That is the level of engagement as a leader in the National Assembly you are supposed to be. Of course, the small little village things can come in. Mm -hmm. But the main idea is you are helping your country 
think when it comes to roads, for example, are we spending too much on roads? Can we have different categories of roads, for example? Can we have more maram roads instead of doing a few tarmac roads? You, you know that kind of thinking, helping the country to think around certain, figure out how to navigate itself. Herman, Herman are you yeah. saying then that because there's a lack of proper understanding of what these processes ought to be, that is yes. why we see the kind of promises that are made across right. board? Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Hmm. Because you are talking about village things and you are supposed to be operating at a national level. Mm -hmm. You see, it is so sad in this country that we, do, we seem to think only the president can change this country. Actually, the, the truth is, if you, are, if you get it wrong at MCA level, then there's nothing the president will do. Mm -hmm. If you get it wrong at uh, MP level, there's nothing the president will do. If you look at the structure of governance, the whole architecture, then you will understand we get it wrong when you think it is a president. It is mm. actually your MC and your MP who can make a difference in your life. And they cannot make a difference in your life if they are so parochial, so, you know, so narrow. They must be focusing on things that can ensure that this country goes to the next level. Who will take this country to the next level? It is the leaders we elect. Mm -hmm. But those leaders we elect cannot take this country to the next level if they are village leaders. The villagers send them. That's why I don't even support this thing of public participation. Eh. I don't at all at all. Eh. I, I agreed with Moy. Wanjiko has sent you there. Why are you coming back to Wanjiko? Eh. Yeah. This country must move forward, my friend. We don't have time to waste on things that are public eh, relations. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So what's wrong with public participation? It is never public participation. It used to be count hall. And I've attended All issues right. at Count Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, Muga, you, maybe you've attended. I have. Then, I don't mm -hmm. know where, me, I come from Higa County. I don't know where you come from. See, me, I, me, I come from Moroni County. Moroni <laughs> County. <laughs> we shall make it a county. <laughs> county number 56. <laughs> now, <laughs> which is Kisumu County. <laughs> now, you see, <laughs> if you live here and an issue is of a national importance is being conversed and the public participation is taking place at Count Hall, mm. go to Kisumu, you'll find the same faces there. Mm -hmm. Same faces. They're the ones who go around. Yes. Now, when you go to Mohoroni, you see the same characters. I'm telling you, these are busy bodies. We have elected people. We have appointed others into management position and leadership position. Let them work. So Let they them should, do the job. They should wake up and decide what's best for us work mm. because without that, consulting us. No, you see, in the, we, it is assumed in the process of interacting with people in your country, with the media. And, you know, you're supposed to be an informed person. You interact with the media, you interact with your citizens, your people you represent. So when you speak, you speak with authority. Do I understand you to be saying, Herman, that yes. let's say, for instance, someone is an MCA. Yes. You oversee the functions of a ward. Yes. That as you interact with your people, you will know what they need because Correct. they will tell yeah. you. They will. You get to know. Yes. Yeah. And if you're an MP yes. who actually visits his constituency, yes. the same thing will happen. So some other busybodies want to go to count hall and say civic education, public participation. Forget about it. Mm. The civic education <laughs> should be an engagement, for example, eh? with certain types of people as you lobby for things. Mm. You know, with media, through media, and you lobby for ideas. But to derail the a process that government is engaged in, to delay legislation in parliament that the country needs to move forward because some busy bodies must public participate and it amounts to nothing. We have to get out of that. This country doesn't have that luxury. You well, know? the fact that it's amounting to nothing is because of the current a way that public participation is maybe being handled and implemented. Even the structures But the there. principle of public participation is, be. yes, you are engaging. You, we shall not assume that we, you go to the village and therefore you listen to the people. We shall create a structure where you engage with the people. That, and that we create be. that principle of public participation. Where it's basically saying, engage with the people, listen to what they want. Go and draft uh, pieces of legislation. Come and engage with the people and tell them, this is what we said. This is what the law would say. This would be the implication of the law. And let the people tell you, we agree, we don't agree. We have some sort of small debate there. So when you go back to represent them, you know that you've got their backs. And they've got your back. And they understand exactly what you're telling them. That's yeah. the whole principle of public participation. There are two things. Now you're saying that that is nonsense. There are two things. Mm. One is a principle. And the other thing is, how do you realize it on the ground? 
we talk about county within counties public participation where are the structures where is the blueprint what does it mean to have public participation i'm a, i'm a member of a county uh, uh, budget and economic forum and the law demands that there must be public participation but i've always asked them what do, what do you mean by that? you invite a few a few busybodies to some location and then they yeah yeah yeah, yeah then you, and you must give them 1000 each at the end of the process <laughs> then they go up. <laughs> yeah. we we don't have that luxury that is at the level of the structure and the level of the ground but mm. even in terms of the principle mm. by the time we get to elect you as a member of parliament mm. you must have something about you that we feel we can utilize at the national level part of that is you know what your people want you mm -hmm. know what this country wants mm -hmm. when you stand in the parliament to speak you know where the world is moving how your country is fitting in that world your country wants to join the first world how it can join the first you could don't go to the village mm -hmm. so even with the principle i don't agree with the principle of public participation it is you know what let me explain this you know why why we have a problem here <laughs> unless we destroy the system through which you elect our leaders throughout history man has always had leadership of one form or the other yes the elephant is in a room is how do you identify a leader at a particular time certain communities looked at the best medicine man you are which dr muga mm. and <laughs> said this now can be the leader of the the like born for example among the Maasai. Mm. in some communities the rainmaker others the man with the best expressive ex abilities of language mm. like latif now will be a leader because he can express himself well and so on what have we done instead in this country we have destroyed everything we could use to identify a good leader uh -huh. so that we now identify these leaders through what we call development conscious yeah some yes. scorecard yeah scorecard i mean mm -hmm. you, you know that is where we get it wrong but oh. if 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 we destroyed that no we must destroy it my presentation to the cytote committee was you must outlaw harambe mm. and make it criminal if we ever found you in some corner of this country raising funds for anything mm. you'll go to jail now once we block that route mm people will begin to look for leaders using other routes and then we shall have the right leaders and the discussion we are having here will not even be there because there will be the right people mm. they would know what the people want what the country needs you know and they will help the country to grow that's what i'm talking about how should we then attack or rather look with what perspective then or should we look at these things that are being said because every day kenyans are being inundated with these things over and over and over again how do you see, what would you say sift through this don't listen to this take this with a pinch of salt or take this one with a, uh, a a whole sack of salt because at the end of the day if you're talking to a group of people here today everybody is so you know wound up by what you're saying and they say yes after all my candidate said they were going to do this my candidate said they were going to do this what do you take and what do you leave lucky enough this thing has been reduced to the presidential election even as you stand in muhoroni uh, where muga is afraid of standing mm. i don't know why <laughs> and yet he would win <laughs> it's not about you muga in muhoroni it's not about any of your policies it's about raila odinga uh -huh. mm. it is about the things as me will do so and i'm saying is lucky because then we can now focus mm. to answer your question mm. and the people of this country have about 40 days to see between raila odinga and william ruto the, the kind of promises certain people are making and I, I've just been talking to Gladys Shole from some TV station. And yeah. I say, look, yeah, if you chip in yourself, mm. and yet you yourself have said, Wajinga Walisha, mm. Mm. if you say certain things that then end up, end up portraying you as chip, the people will not have a problem choosing for, between Raila and Ruto. Mm -hmm. If, for example, people know that they are suffering, and you say price of maize flour is up because of the handshake, you know, there are very few Kenyans who can take that kind of cheapness you know <laughs> <laughs> if you say if you say it's only kenya that is suffering today look even villagers know these things these things are global even yeah. the villagers have children in america uganda is just next door mm. and to say that life in uganda is softer than kenya which is a big lie so it is easy now because this thing is not even at parliamentary level is at the national level for presidential elections and the kenyans will be able to sort out between the people who 
who are most likely to win eh, between Raila and uh, William Ruto, mm. who seems to be making what could be More as near tangible. as possible uh, <laughs> called realistic promises, uh -huh. and who is being populist mm. and uh, throwing around slogans and you know, and so it will not be very difficult for the country. They'll mm. know. Mm. The country will know. At least the, the mass of people who are supposed to decide this election. An election is decided by a small percentage. Yeah. Because by and large, almost 80% of the people are already decided. Mm. And they decide on such uh, uh, primitive uh, <laughs> considerations <laughs> as, tribe. as tribe, region, that's race, interest That's color. interesting. That's interesting because I was just about to ask you, do you think then these decisions which are largely what 80 percent already decided yes are they decided on elements of you know we've interrogated what no, these individuals no. are saying to us and we've they found are, certain they are, solutions they or decided, they've already made the decision they are decided because they are blue collar workers in america and therefore they go with the democratic party they have decided because they are Lewis and they go with raila they are decided because they are calling and they'll go with ruto and that is you can't do anything about it these ethnicities they are global they are only defined different. Here it is tribe, elsewhere it is religion, elsewhere it is the other thing. But these are the primordial. These are, these are very primitive. But they are what, by, by and large, yeah. informs the decision people make. And I'm saying about 80% of the people already decided in that manner, without uh -huh. being rational, without, you know, and you can't blame them. So the That's how the world works. Are who decides them. Now there is a small percentage of people mm. who then will decide an election. And I've been telling people like William Ruto, this small percentage, they, they also have some little influence. Eh? They can influence even the other side, Kidogo. Mm. They are a thinking lot. Mm. And they can be rational about the way they look at things. And you can repel them, you can repulse them when you cheapen yourself. The image that comes out of you as a leader, for example, look at, uh, look at the so-called, uh, uh, what are they calling them? This forum is... Ruto is having with people. Chatters. County charters. Chatters. 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 Yeah. No, Business. An intelligent person will ask, you mean you, Economic can, you can pick a few professors from the from some university, sit with them in two hours and discuss matters of education and put it down and that can be policy? Surely, you need experts and you need time. Matters of health. You can say you can draw a charter after listening to people for two or three hours. You see, thinking Kenyans can now begin to set you aside. Mm. As they look for the serious candidate who might now then end up being Raila. Because they, they know it's not possible. But what Raila you can do with the people. Those people you're saying. Pardon? Raila is not even engaging those people you're saying. How is he not so engaging? What is his, what, what are his promises? He's not engaging the people? Well. Are you sure? I'm not sure. I, I'm I mean, just saying. I, I thought Raila has gone around the country more than anybody else. If we all agree that uh, BBI was part of the agenda. And uh, many of the things that inform his thinking could also be drawn from that process of the handshake and BBI and his entire political career. So, so this, this boardroom and town hall meetings that take not more than a day. Yes, can they, they cannot be used to inform policy. If you met doctors and nurses and other health workers, mm. they can tell you, look here, but for you, we have our issues. Mm. Please look at them. We don't get promotion because the people we are working under do not understand matters of health. But you cannot sign things with them in the presence of a lawyer. Because one of the, the things health workers have mm. on the table is the health service board. Mm. That essentially dismantles the co constitutional provision. You get it? Mm -hmm. So you cannot change the constitution in that town hall. So what are you signing? That's the cheapness I'm talking about. But you can listen to their issue and see how they fit in your overall dream and vision and manifesto. And when you are implementing your manifesto, they are not now making your manifesto. When you are implementing your manifesto, you can, okay, doctors are these issues. I think they are. Let's see how we can fit in within them. But you cannot, for example, address those things and sign because then you need to change the constitution, first of all. Not only that. But yeah, it's a promise. <laughs> the yeah. very concept, a charter can't be a promise. Hmm? A charter, by its very nature, mm. can only be given by a sovereign entity. A political party is not sovereign. Yes. By sovereign, I mean mm. they give it to you and it's implementable immediately. That's what I'm talking about. So the cheapness then comes out. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about, you see. <laughs> you people. But, but if so you said you are meeting you know, people... Whether this should be called a charter no, or no, no. whatever it's called. But you see... A document that is a promissory note that is being signed. When you bring even lawyers to witness as you sign, that is not what... charter. Eric, Let's say... What, a charter what, can't be a promissory note. Whatever this is... The basis of it, it's a promise. 
It's a promise between this and the other person. That's a manifesto. Right? Not the charter. Mm. Forget about it. Mm. So it's a, we have sat, we have discussed, and you have told me these are the issues that you see you want addressed. I am saying I have listened. And I am going to do the best in my power to deliver to your promises. Well, that would be wonderful. Then I sign. That would be You've wonderful. been calling for the same social contract. This is exactly what, what this are you is. Signing? Social contract. What are you signing? I, pr I, I am signing that I am going to do my best. What Munga is telling you, mm. what Munga is telling you, a signature must bear some authority. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you, you can't scribble on a people's face and say signature. Mm. That hand <laughs> ought to have some authority. There's a lawyer wearing a wig standing you, next to you, it. You, you see, I don't understand. So what, what are you saying? He can wear three wigs. What are you saying? <laughs> if you want, and wear two on yes, your feet. Yes, exactly. But if you listen, I want to, let, let me clarify this, because maybe somebody is listening to us. Yeah. What I'm saying is, there's nothing wrong with talking to people, getting to hear their issues. Mm -hmm. But what I find cheap is when you sell that to the country, that because I'm talking to these people, I'm better than the other side. Mm. Why? After listening to teachers and lecturers in three hours, now that is what I'm issues. going to implement. I have come up with them with, with an implementation matrix for my government. Number one, because you cannot solve matters of teachers of education in a sitting of three hours. You cannot even do that for health. Okay? Mm -hmm. And remembering that certain things will need legislation, mm -hmm. even the constitutional amendments. Then you move to the next stage and the sign. And the Muga is asking you, you are signing as who? It is enough for you to say, I was listening to you people and you have very good ideas. They seem even to be resonating with my manifesto and my thinking and my policies. Mm. I may need to trick here and there my manifesto to accommodate some of the things you have said. Mm. That is intelligent. Exactly. But when you present it as if it is like a binding document. It isn't. Come on. It's a promise. No, a promise is that you don't sign two promises and make them look it's like they're them and leave it. It's right? a social contract. No. I have listened to this interview. You note down. For example, Those are, you note down. You note yes. down the yes. issues yes. Yes. on the youth. <laughs> yes. I'm going to do the best to establish and support incubation centers for creative artists to nurture their talent and educate them on monetizing in the industry to improve accessibility, availability, and affordability of NHIF, to deliver high-quality healthcare services to young people, to create jobs as well as formulating policies to better the lives of the youth. This is the promise I make to you. After, after having nothing, listened to you, I'm going wrong. to do everything to include it there even in my manifesto. Nothing. Remember, the charters are preceding manifesto. Yes. Right? Correct. So this is, I, I, I see it as that. What I'm saying, I, the, what I'm I have saying, issues whether they are going to be, you know, implemented. The one you are reading was for yesterday. Yes, for the youth. Two days to the manifesto launch. Education charter. No, look, the youth yes. was not yesterday. Youth was last Whatever, week. a few days ago. Mm. There was another one was the other day, another one yesterday. Other day, they, are, they have been the past two weeks. Yeah. The manifesto is tomorrow. Mm. Mm. Is it tomorrow, something like that? That's yes. the cheapness I'm talking about. <laughs> you cannot meet guys today and say, now, this is. And even you see some of the things you are reading there yeah. require legislation. Yes. Require parliamentary approval. Yes. You, Which you, is you, all the process you, you of know, running a you government. Know. So, what is the idea of signing? I, this is what I'm saying is cheap. I promise that I've heard you. I have heard and you. And I am going mm. to do everything in my power. Correct. To, you stop there. If you give you me stop the there. government, I am going to push for the realization of your dreams. You stop there and you don't do two things. Yeah. Number one, you don't make it appear like it's a contract, a legal contract, because it cannot be a legal contract. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm. And you don't tell people, this is now my manifesto. Because the meeting of two, three hours, mm. if it is going to be what you are going to use to put in your manifesto, then you're also cheap. Because man, a manifesto really is a representation of a dream. Oh, and this is the thing I'm talking about even oh, and, and, the, and the dream cannot be contributed to you by, by members of the groups? country, There's, interest groups. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah, well, let's take a break. Okay. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings. All right, it's a quarter to ten. Conversation continues. Eric Clatif, <coughs> City Muga, Nduoko, and our guest political analyst, Herman Manyora. City. You know, the 
The thing about our politics that I find most daunting mm. is the corrosive nature of it. You know, we always talk about people who are of good standing before they actually get into politics, but and then things get worse when they actually get elected. Now, whether this speaks of what they really were or whether it speaks to of the influences that they then encounter and the flow with which they now choose to actually go with, sometimes uh, it, it's a debate that I haven't concluded in my mind. But because of what political life offers people and what it enables you to do, then it's that rare person then who isn't sucked into it. It's that rare person. And yet, the norm ought to be, we are saying, you know, this is the person who is actually uh, not resonating with the fold. This is the odd person. And yet, our politics is, the vast majority are the people who actually don't do what they are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And worse still, when Herman talked about this role they have of legislating, yes, they do legislate, but look at the legislations that they pass. They go contrary to that very point of representation. It actually, the legislation seems to work against the very people that they are representing. So, it begs the question. And this is the, has been a debate in this room for a long time. How do you get the voter to understand that they can hold their leaders to account even after they have come in, after you've given them that, because it's you who gives them that position. How do you hold them to account? Well, it's not easy. We are tempted in the constitution to say we could, uh, we, we put in a recall clause, mm. but left parliament to do the fine tuning <laughs> as expected. And, and they recalled and the clause. And you know how they fine tuned it, didn't you? <laughs> uh, I think to address your issue, uh, Wycliffe, it is the ecosystem yes. within which you will operate. Mm. If it, 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 it does not matter what kind of person you are. If the ecosystem is what we have today, you go to parliament. They say if you, if if you are a normal ma a normal person in a madhouse, you are then then it's you who is who is, who is, who is <laughs> you abnormal. One must ask. Yeah. One must ask. Okay. What I'm addressing are the things we need to do, steps we ought to take. For example, I've talked about how do you identify our leaders. Mm -hmm. Let government provide services in the manner in which Ruto and Raila are saying they will. You know, mm -hmm. Raila is talking about free education, mm -hmm. and it had better be real education. Sio bora elimu, elimu bora, nani bure. That. Let them address health. None of them is addressing health in the manner I would want them to address. Mm -hmm. It is not about this capitalistic approach to health that makes America a country so much and where people really have challenges with getting health services. Mm -hmm. This very capitalistic way. We can go where we were. Mm. The idea is equip government facilities, modernize them, mm. uh, pay your health workers well, take care of their welfare, uh, you know, have brought better procurement systems, manufacture drugs in this country, some of those that we can, because you get a drug, it is coming from a, from a country, you try to read, you can't even understand, you can't even know where it comes from, and yet the drug you are taking comes from there. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> now, once you've taken care of that, then you can begin to stamp down on, 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 on corruption and mm. ban harambe. Then you get good leaders. Mm. Secondly, mm. we need to ask ourselves, why do people go to parliament? They go to parliament because they go there to make money. Yes, for themselves. So we must stop that. We must find a way. I thought that was the purpose of SRC. To the extent that it has never addressed that, they should go home disband the SRS because they have no purpose. Let us make parliament a position of, of service, not of making money. Mm. I grew up councillors not being paid. They're, yeah? they're actually employed elsewhere until 1979 when Moy said, choose one. If you are a teacher, remain a teacher mm. or go to the county assembly. Many no. of them went back. To they, were actually, they were essentially volunteers. Yes, they were volunteers. And even the city of Nairobi mm. and many cities in the world. Mm. In the parliament, I, I grew up when people earned 8,000 shillings. And that was the idea of the allowance. Now with all these packs and huge salaries, they still get sitting allowances. Some of which they get without ever putting their whatever down mm. to sit, to do <laughs> anything. You, you get what I'm saying? So, if we reduce parliament to a place where people go to work 
it will attract the best people. So these issues we are discussing here will not even come. Mm. They will not be subject to discussion. Because why would you go to parliament if salary is 100,000 or 80,000 shillings? Unless you really want to do the job. Yeah. Why do you think we have lecturers teaching at the University of Nairobi and these universities? Because they have a calling. They know they can make money elsewhere. And there's no money in teaching. But they are teaching. So let's make parliament something similar to that. Where we just facilitate you to do your job. And not to give you the luxury of millions of shillings. I hear last time before they left, they gave themselves like about six million, five point eight or something like that. You know, less once you stop that, you are beginning to improve the ecosystem. Mm. And once the ecosystem is improved, first it will attract people Quality. who really want to serve their country. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the good people who go in will will find good company, certainly. Mm -hmm. You know, and the ideas will flourish and the, the country will grow. And then development begets development, yeah. and right? Then, and then we need to do things like this cheapness. And I keep telling the judiciary and other agencies, look at leaders. We confuse criminal culpability with issues of integrity. Mm. Sure, if a man grabs somebody's wife in full sight of people and rapes her or does something like that, and he, he's being cleared to run mm. <laughs> because the process has not been concluded. Why are we it's confusing these two? And the Justice <laughs> Mombingogi told us, these two are not the same. Mm. The threshold for criminal culpability is not the same as that of integrity. So, we can tell you, look here, continue with your cases. The law will take care of you. Yeah. But for now, please, leave, leave well, this leave public space. No, mm. you are China now. Mm. Because we have children and they want to, to they want get inspiration. Yes. They want to look at people. Sure they want to be like you. Mm. So, you who has a 200 year to, to 70 year jail term how would you be running for office you are a good man continue with your appeal mm. but let us not mix the two so these are some of the things muga we will have to do things about unless we do that if the judiciary continues engaging on things that should decide on in a minute or in an hour and they take six months mm. somebody has a certificate which is forged the judiciary is taking a year or two or three. <laughs> Unless we move away from this, this country will collapse. I'm telling you. A certificate which you either have or you don't have. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's very clear. You say you went yeah. to a school. That school was not even there that time. You say <laughs> it, it is a certificate from NEC. NEC tell you, I at an index number. Kuna. <laughs> the headmaster of the school comes to say, look here. We never had, I was, I was there these years. Our record is sure that this, this guy was not there. Then you come with a diploma certificate. It belongs to another student. You have just changed. And the student is even a woman and you are a man. And the courts are still listening to the case. So the ecosystem we need to create is an ecosystem first of seriousness. Mm. Herman, are these yes. indicators of a mature democracy? Because just looking at some of the things that you've said, yes. can we create a space that then is preserved for individuals who are not looking to get rich by that position, yes. who are really vested and interested in making the little area that they represent yes. then yes. part of a larger ecosystem that works? Correct. Because it's clear in development circles, development begets development. Yes. You create this little part, it's working it's going to be a domino effect. Yes. Then you, again, find like-minded people in that same area, then who are able to do... So, as we're looking at all of these things, then if one plus one is two, can we then say that because we do not see those things currently replicating themselves, then this democracy space within, or this development space, this economic space within which we are playing then, is not mature. And it has to, to work. And there are two ways it can work, and it will work. Mm. One, a man or a woman will land in state house as the president of this country, and things will just change. It's as simple as that. Mm. The other one is you'll push people to the wall, and there'll be a revolution. Revolutions are messy. They destroy even the little you have made. It takes time, but in the end, maybe through lessons of history, which is not easy to, to learn. You can see Southern Sudan. They, have, they don't seem to have learned, but they will learn. So either we will wait for a revolution to open our eyes, mm. or we will be lucky enough to get a man or woman in state house mm. who can set us on the path to begin at least, somewhere to begin. Unfortunately for human beings, even when they have a, such a clear choice, sometimes <laughs> <laughs> it is difficult. <laughs> 
you know, I interact with educated men and women. <laughs> Sometimes when you hear them talking, you just say, God save this country. <laughs> God save this country. We're stuck. There's something about human nature, and it's leaning towards what they consider to be easy or simple. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's what impunity does. Yes. It makes it easy for something that is wrong to be given a different shade. Correct. And a shade that you may find acceptable. And if you give it time, then it becomes a norm. Now, getting rid of that norm and moving away from it then becomes a problem. Mm. Then there's the issue of being able to stand up and say, hey, uh, folks, uh, this, one, this path I'm not going to follow. Because accepting as normal what Herman has been referring to, mm. the substandard way in which our affairs are managed, accepting it and saying, well, you know, we even coin phrases to explain it. Mm. I'm doing this and the other. And yet, the thing that I found fascinating is with all the pilfering, with all the misuse of state resources, that this country actually still soldiers on. So I ask myself the question, if things were done right, yes, what exactly would happen? Where would we be? Very far. Very far. Kenya has the potential to go into the skies. I'm telling you. Because all the money that we hear is stolen. You know, you can't steal something that doesn't exist. Yeah, I mean, it must be there. It must be there for you to take it. And it seems like it just keeps being taken and taken. And yet, the country just moves on. It's enough for us to move. Precisely. Now, what <laughs> if what was being taken actually was available to be used for what was it, what was, it was meant for? Exactly. Mm. And that's what I said. What, 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 what I said was, Moga, that uh, we will need to have a man or woman. Mm. You see, I have looked at this country and I've looked at other countries. You know, it is surprising how, is, how simple it is to change this country. It is so simple. I don't want to talk about Raila Odinga because people think I support him. They, are, they could be wrong. So let me use Mother, uh, let me use Mother Karua. Mm. <laughs> Do you know if Mother Karua was president for six months, mm. you would not know you live in this country? Because all you need is a person who am by a check in a doer. Don't laugh with people. The judicial, like he said yesterday, you are there. There should be reason why a case should be taking six months. And we will not be interfering with your job. We will sit down and try to find if there are challenges. Like why the, why our case is taking six years instead of three months? You know, if you have a serious person in State House to send the signal, the often cited example is uh, of uh, Must Mustala or Muhammad, the Nigerian guy who took over. And in the morning, every, the traffic in Nigeria was flowing in Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> Just that, who is... You call Murtala, Murtala Muhammad. Yes. Muhammad. Who is taken over? Murtala Muhammad. Huh? Go to her. Everything was working. Mm. So, if you get someone like Mother Karua in State House, my friend, because it is so simple to change this car. All you need is a person to ensure that people just do their work. Yeah. We have everything. Human resource. We have infrastructure. You know, some people do not know we are lucky. They are, they, we even compare ourselves with some of these African countries. Mm. Where, in fact, mm -hmm. the things you get in your village in Muhoroni, you'll have to go to the capital city to get. To go and get. Including a malaria test. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Haman, thank you for joining us today. Yeah. <laughs> come again soon before the election. But next time I come, uh, we agreed, but we have broken the promise. The promise was next time we come, we just talk about ordinary things. Why are you patching the discussion in the skies? Uh -uh. Uh, so <laughs> just put we'll it down about, on the ground. We'll talk Sorry. about ground. Yeah, ground. We'll yeah. talk about ground. So please invite me before election. We'll talk about ground. So, uh,